all started when I was in Houston attending the board of directors of Mason Best, an investment private equity company. Usually, Mason Best have a dinner before the, the board. And during the dinner, one of the members is giving a speech or talk about a subject, etc. Suddenly, the president of the board of directors said to me, now there are negotiations for peace in the Middle East. Can you talk about it? You know, this is a story of 50 years. How can you resume it in a few minutes? So I said to them, let me take you in a nice historical trip to Damascus and especially to a street which is between the east and west of Damascus, Bab Shari'i and Bab Ghar. The, the west part of it is called Bab Jabi. Uh, this is very historical and long time existence for the street. Uh, now they call it Suq al-Tawil or they call it Suq Madhat Basha but it is really the straight street because it was very straight and uh, it was uh, mentioned that uh, St. Paul uh, went there and built in Bab Shari a small church uh, called Hanania. This is uh, a, a, now as a holy place that many people are visiting. Uh, if we start from Bab Jabi, we find ourselves among mixture of cultures and civilization. If we Look at the buildings behind us at the gate and ask ourselves what is it? It's historical. The answer is this is, was like a university where they were teaching uh, science and medicine. And I was told that they were doing some surgical operation. This building, historical building, was uh, constructed around 1,100 years. On the left side, we see a citadel, the citadel of Damascus. It was built small citadel in during the Roman uh, area, and then the Arabs made of it a big citadel, and it was historical for the defense of Damascus. And then, if you look at the other side, you can see a mosque. Uh, very uh, nicely done and with details. The mosque called Snani. Oh, it is a mosque built by Snan Basha, who built many uh, mosques in Turkey. So we have lot of history at the beginning of the game. We go a little bit uh, to, to the street and we find a, an area, modern area, called Al-Hariqa, the fire. 
This was bombarded by the French occupation at 1925. So we are in the modern, in the, and then we go into the covered area of Souk Matat Pasha, or the street called Street. Uh, we find that around this covered area, many small souks specialized in many professions. There are professions to make the abaya, others to make the, uh, for the head, a gal, and, but other also for textile. And I was told that Queen Elizabeth had her robe of a wedding uh, made in Damascus. So we continue and we find ourselves in uh, a place where Christian, Jews, Muslims are uh, shops also uh, are living there together and they were really cooperating and I was told that uh, if one trader see that his neighbor did not sell anything, if a client come to him, he said, the, uh, my neighbor has this merchandise because he, he was satisfied for himself. And this is an action of cooperation. Then there are in this cover soup the Khan, several Khans, maybe 10 or 15, among them huge Khans like Khan Asad Basha and, and others who are big but not so huge. In the Khan, they used to receive the buyers and uh, there they, when they arrive with their camels or their transportation, uh, there they put the animals in the floor and they live in the first floor. And down there were the shops. And they were, built, uh, they were buying for them from all over the city and put them together and they go until second season. Uh, this was a center of business for people because it has a credit. For example, they buy in September, they pay in January, etc. Et and also the, the number of merchandise and was great and it gives good uh, profit for the seller and the buyer. Uh, also, there, there are also uh, some small street in the name of the profession, Souq al-Harir, the silk souk, uh, Souq al-Dra, uh, Souq al-Nhas, uh, each one is, has a profession. Uh, but if we advance more and more, we will see a great street which they sell uh, luxury food, Souq al And at, at the middle way, there is a castle, not castle, palace, called Palace Al-Azam. This was 200 years, or no, more, 250 years. 
was built by the governor of Damascus, Mr. Ladum. And uh, if you go further, you see the Umayyad Mosque. This is very historical because it has the tomb of St. John and it was converted into a mosque because they made an agreement between Christian and Muslims. If we continue a little bit further in the straight street, we find ourselves in Mantat Shaham. This is this is the area of the Shia living on the same street. And then further you see yourself in the Jews area, Hart al Yahud. In that area there are very beautiful castles and there are uh, schools and uh, synagogues and like a normal life for the Jews. You go ahead, you find yourself in Babtuma and Babshari where Catholics, Orthodox, uh, Protestant are living together. So you have from Bab Jabi and Bab Sharqi a, no, a kind of uh, mixture of religions and civilization. But this all nice living together, you can see more of it uh, while you are for example, uh, uh, making business, there are something other. There are the social treatment between the traders. I remember uh, some one of the traders went bankrupt and the creditor met together and I was there. I was 13, 14 years old. The session was opened by my father. He asked the people attending the meeting uh, how many uh, children he has. They told him six. And then he asked, does he has a house? They said, no, he rent a house. My father said, let us take part of the remaining money of his bankruptcy and buy him a house and give him some merchandise to restart again because he is our colleague, he is like one of us. Everybody agreed and the man returned to business. Nobody tried to say, let us uh, go to, the, uh, to court and uh, punish him. We had in the past, during the 30s, uh, a, an office in Japan and there were also uh, other like the Rabbats, the Dips, etc. They had offices to export Japanese merchandise to Syria for themselves and for the, the other big trader. Once uh, Muhammad Khair al aqqal he was a big trader, came to them before the war 
maybe six months. And he wanted to put an order. They sit together and they fill an order of six pages of quantities, a huge quantities. And while he was finalizing that, they called him, there is a telephone. He made the telephone but did not come back. Neither sign. So my father said to his partner, Waji Smadi, uh, why don't we order? Maybe tomorrow he will come and he will come and sign. He never came. And uh, the merchandise uh, went on. And, but at that time, the war declared between Japan and America. Uh, the merchandise was sent, and but now the, uh, the the money is they call it uh, enemy money. <laughs> no. So it was stopped several times. It went to India. It was confiscated by the British Army. And then with other uh, uh, lawsuits, etc., uh, convincing the government that this is owned by some people in Syria. He and release it to go to Alexandria. The same thing happened. Also, another year, it, it was stopped the, the third time in uh, Haifa. And then it went to Beirut and Damascus. They sold the merchandise and they made a huge profit. I remember that uh, my father asked his partner, now we have a lot of profit. Is, is it all for us? Or this man who came here, Muhammad Khair al and put the order, but never signed, never returned. But maybe he has some rights in it. So they called Muhammad Khayyam Ahad and they told him the story. He said, I don't remember anything and I have nothing to ask you. <laughs> this is your prophet. And then they thought about it and they took a part for charity. This is the story. There was such emphasis and importance given to to the right, morals, to the rights, and this is from early childhood. It's, yeah. it's transmitted. You want this is this about the uh, uh, the little coin? The, uh, can can you remember of that story? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we went as many people from Damascus to Seran in, in uh, near Jdaibi or something near Damascus. I was six years old or five years old. And they put carpet on the hall in the uh, Bustan and we started to to cook something, to eat, etc. And I went to, in the garden, and the, the land is not ours. I found nice apple. I took it and start to eat. My father said, from where you have this apple? I said, from the tree. He said, come to me. I would like to 
show to you how you buy. He said, you have every day خرجية. Oh, and it, it was the uh, the metallic piece with a hole in it so he said to me hang it at the place where you took the apple I hung it there he said we don't take the things of the others you buy it uh, so you pay for it. Uh, in the evening, we went back to to the city by, by the train, and we rem- when we were at home, we found out that the carpet that we used for sitting there is lost or stayed there when. Fifteen years later, I was reading the newspapers that uh, on the wall of uh, uh, a library, just uh, to review them. And I looked around me, I found cell, a bag, what they call a bag, and our carpet with the name of my father was there. I said to him, this is the name of my father. He said, this is a miracle. I am since 15 years coming every uh, Saturday to, to the town and I was show it to the others. Maybe I can find the owner. I took him to my father and uh, they were becoming friends and during, يعني, I think there is a relationship between the carpet and the apple. Many other stories that I have in my life also when I was young. Telling me about this Sukh Madhat Basha or Straight Street. Once I was buying a furniture in Fassas in Damascus. They, I went to a trader, Jul Abu Dawood, and I found with him a very nice kabo beautiful 200 years old and uh, I was discussing the price and there were an old man sitting aside and he stand up and came to me he said are you the son of Abu Bashir my father they used to call him Abu Bashir Yes, I am. And then started to pray for my father. This is a great man. He saved my life. I was surprised. How? He said, I was, I, I, I had a shop for textile. And I was indebted to Bang Zalfa. This a Jewish band in Damascus. And then Bank Zalcha started to look at me as if I am going to be bankrupt. And uh, really nobody wanted to give me merchandise or anything and I was frozen. And they wanted to take my merchandise. So I went to your father I told him my story. He said, today you will receive new merchandise that it is easy to sell and have liquidity and to pay the back. 
He said, somebody do, doing that to you. What do you call him? What do you... And then he prayed a lot for my father and the soul my father. Yeah, this is one of the stories that my father did not care if he is Jew or Muslim or Christian. So many stories like that. It has a lot of humanity. But they also, there is a kind of understanding and business law among all the traders in this street. Uh, um, yani fairness is number one. The word, it is contract. And there were no, no much uh, uh, contracts written. And uh, uh, compassion and uh, uh, the good relationship between neighbors between was uh, the first uh, principle. I said, you see how now you can have all these communities, Christian, Jews, uh, Muslims, Shia, Sunni, whatever, are we're living together in peace. And it was a good example for cohabitation. You have Harvard Business School, and it, it, it is the best business school in the world. But we have Souk Matat Basha, or the Straight Street Business School, which has, in addition to the good conduct, there is a, 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 a social and love between the people and their families. We discussed that in uh, in the world after that, they said the world will have peace really when we take the example of uh, the stress. Thank you.